Today we're going to talk about the optical end stop on the MKS S Gen L version 1.0. Now I need to review a couple of things, so I'm going to start with the end stops. First of all, we have our X minimum, our X maximum, our Y minimum, our Y maximum, our Z minimum, and our Z maximum. Now with the pins, they work as follows. The top pin of each one of these is voltage. In this case, it's five volts. And the reason for that has to do with the jumper rate here being on five volts for the logic. If you were to move the jumper over to these two pins, it would be 3.3 volt logic. Now the next pin is your ground pin for each and every one of these. That's the middle pin. And the bottom pin in that group is known as the signal pin. For the end stop, I need to talk about the actual pinouts on this as well. So if you look very closely here, you can see that there's a V up here. Then you have a S and then you have a G. So the first one is voltage, the next one is signal, and the last one is ground. So that will matter how you're connecting it to your MKS S Gen L version 1.0 board. So as you can see on here, there's a notched connector for this, so it makes it pretty simple to figure out what to do. So I'm just going to slide that in the notch connection. Now on the other side, you're going to have to trace out your wires like I have from these actual wires where you know the positions to the other end. So in my case, I have red is voltage, black is ground, and then signal I've left unmarked for my DuPont connectors. So here's the other side of the optical end stop now if you haven't already figured it out it's an optical end stop because a field of light needs to be broken in order for a circuit to be created so in this case the field is right in the center here so anything that's solid will break this field and cause a signal to be sent so to connect this up we're going to start with our red wire which we traced out is voltage and we're going to connect it right here next we're going to connect our black wire which is ground and we're going to connect it to the next pin below and then finally we're going to connect our signal pin to the very bottom pin make sure those are in good and so all we need to do now is actually connect Serial USB cable to the board. So I'm going to connect the big side to the connector over here. And the small side, I'm going to connect to the computer, and you're going to hear a beep. Okay, to start with, once again, I want to review where the end steps are and what they look like. So as you can see right here, we have our end stops for x minimum x max y minimum y max z minimum and z max as you can see it says five volts for the top pin the next pin is ground which is right here and then the last pin is signal so what we need to do next is actually load marlin firmware so i'm going to open up my web browser and I'm going to type Marlin FW.org and press enter. And this is going to bring us to the Marlin firmware website. This is open source Marlin firmware. So we're going to go to the download tab. And as you can see, there's a couple of different downloads. Because we're using an ARM processor or a 32-bit processor, we have to use 2.0 
32.4.4 or anything above 2 in order to do 32 bit. So I'm going to use bug fix, but just to let you know, there's one under development called 2.1 that uh, currently is not released as a actual latest release. That won't be until next year. So I'm going to do the nightly build download for the bug fix. And while that's downloading, I'm going to talk about the resources they have down here. They have release notes. Reporting an issue. This is opening a bug or asking a question. And then joining the project. So we're going to go to reporting an issue. And inside here, they have the latest issues that have been opened on different configurations. So in our case, if we want to search on, let's say, the TMC 2209 and press enter, we can see all the issues that have opened up here that they're using. And we can uh, look into these issues if we so choose by clicking on them. And this will explain what the person is seeing for their bug description and the steps they followed and what's occurring. So keep that in mind if you have an issue or a question because you can post those as well up above in here if you need to ask a question. So keep that in mind because I may not have all the answers that you're looking for. So I'm going to close out of that for now and I'm going to go to the show in folder. Now it's zip, so we need to extract it. So I'm going to right click and then I'm going to click extract all and the extract button. And while this is extracting, let me let you know that I purchased all of the equipment with my own money and no one is paying me or sponsoring me to do this tutorial but I will be placing Amazon affiliate links or other affiliate links in the description to help you find it better. Now keep in mind the Amazon affiliate links or affiliate links will give me a portion of the sale if you do choose to purchase it. It would be greatly appreciated, but keep in mind I also have a tipping for PayPal if you just wanna tip me. So now that this is almost extracted, I'm going to open up VS Code and click on that. And inside here, I already have it open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I normally do. So we have to find our board. So I'm going to go to source for boards.h. Inside boards.h, right now it's highlighted for me which is board underscore MKS underscore S gen underscore L. And that's our board. So I'm going to copy that by right clicking and going to copy. Now keep in mind that this processor is the LPC 1768. That'll be relevant in a moment. So I'm going to close out of boards.h. I'm going to minimize core and source. And I'm going to go to configuration.h. At the top of configuration.h, what I'm going to do is a search on motherboard, and I'm going to highlight board underscore ramps underscore 14 underscore EFB and paste what we just copied. So that is our board that we're using. I'm going to go up here also and change a serial port to negative 1. And note the speed that we're communicating with the board at. It's 250,000 bits. So that may be important in future tutorials. That's why I'm saying that. So now we want to do a search on end stop. And what we have here are end stop settings. Now currently we're using the X minimum, the Y minimum, and the Z minimum. But it is possible to enable the other ones on this board. I don't suggest it unless you're using something that requires it. So we're going to skip talking about that for now. And then we also have end stop pull ups. This allows us to enable end stop pull ups to deal with a float state. Currently, I don't use it. It usually is not an issue. So I'm going to skip it but it evens out the actual state that you have 
for your actual voltage. Down here we have inverting. And what this means is if I type M119 to find out the status and proner face of the end stops, what it will tell me is if they're open or triggered. In this case, it'll probably say open for our end stop being the optical end stop. So I don't want to change it. But if I were to change it to or from false to true, it would change the open to triggered. So we're all set there. What we need to do now is prepare platform io.ini. And right now we have the mega 2560 is our default environment. So what I want to do here is change it for our default environment. And if you don't already know this, I said it a little bit earlier, it's the LPC 1768, which is our chipset. A way to confirm that, we can go to source core, or excuse me, source pins, and then we can go to the LPC 1768, and right here, you can see that our board being the pins underscore MKS underscore SGEN L dot H is our board. And these would be the actual pins for our signal pins throughout the board. So keep that in mind if you need to uh, find something on your board. You can usually find it in the pins file with the help of the pin out diagram. So now that we know that, we're going to go back to platform io.ini and we're going to change the mega 2560 to the LPC 1768 for our board type. And to actually set up the actual compile for this, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the, not the build check mark, but on the arrow for upload. What this will do is it will build or compile for us and then upload to our board. If you don't already know it, our board right now has just firmware on it. So you'll see a change in just a second after it compiles. So I'm going to click the upload button. Okay, as you can see, the build is completed and it said one succeeded and it took four minutes and 18 seconds. So I'm going to scroll up and check on our chipset. In this case, our default environment was the LPC 1768, which says it succeeded. So I'm going to check on it by going to the USB drive and as you can see now there's firmware.bin loaded. So in order to actually load this on the board I'm going to disconnect the USB for a moment. Then I'm going to reconnect it and while it's reconnecting it will be flashing the update. So as you can see, it's recently updated to the moment in time that we built it. Okay, in order to test it, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over to my desktop and I'm gonna open up print run so I can up and up proner face. So now that we're in proner face, I'm gonna connect to the device being the 3D printer for the MKS S Gen L. And as you can see, it says printer is now online. So we're going to test the end stop initially to see what it says. So we're going to type M119, press enter. And as you can see, it says open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a piece of paper to trip the sensor. And I'm going to type or press send for M119. And now it says triggered. So I'm going to remove the paper again. And I'm going to do one last send of M119 for the G code. And it says open. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And thank you for your time.